What's up guys, it's James from uh, Team Eternal Hope and I'm going to be bringing you a deck profile of my Fate Stay Night Unlimited Blade White Y Schwartz deck. Um, I'm also going to be talking a little bit about where um, basically where the team have been for the last five months and why we haven't really been doing very much. Um, also just a little sort of briefing before I go into this deck profile. Um, I basically restarted playing Wise after a couple of years, sort of last team league which was in June. Um, I picked up a random deck, played it for the national event after the team league, and went free free. Um, they then decided to release my favourite series, Face Day Night Unlimited Blade Works, into um, the Y Schwartz game. And um, so I built this deck, but I haven't really been able to play it very much because of certain circumstances, which I'll explain later on in the video. Um, so I don't really know the effects too well, I uh, don't really sort of know the names very well or what the game sort of requires of now and so this is my sort of build of what I'm currently thinking is quite good. Um, I have had a look online and it's a little bit different to what most people do and run but um, we'll go straight into the deck build so I'm going to have to legitimately play cards like this and then read one just sort of to give you a bit of a warning. So basically to start off with the level zeros I run two of resolution to fight Shiro. So basically what he does is all of your master cards get Encore. Um, so that basically and basically that Encore requirement is put the top card of your deck into clock. So you basically take the damage to keep you guys alive. Um, his main skill which you use him for though is his other skill. So auto, uh, you pay two stock. I uh, might also reference Cardfight Vanguard terms, sorry in advance guys. Um, so when this card is placed on the stage from hand, you may pay the cost if you do. Search your deck for up to one Saber Master Shiro, which is the level one um, guy I'm going to talk about in a bit. Um, reveal it to your opponent and put it into your hand, and you shuffle your deck afterwards. I run uh, two of him, both secret rare as well. Ah, uh, my shiny's in this game. Um, yep, so it's basically all he's in there for. I then run two Style of a Knight Saber, the double rare. Uh, basically what she does is continuous, your other characters in the middle position of the centre stage, uh, which is like currently like the centre of your thing, you see how, yeah, you know, you guys know. Um, gets the following ability, this card cannot be chosen by your opponent's effects, so basically they can't be targeted by sort of kill effects or return effects or stop bomb effects and other things such as that. Um, she then goes and does an act, pay one, of your stock, put the top card of your deck into your clocks, you take damage and you rest this card. Um, you may then search your deck for up to one character with Shiro or Saber in its card name, which is a majority of this deck because this is a Saber Archer deck primarily. Um, in its card name, reveal it to your opponent and put it into your hand, shuffle your deck afterwards. Something I also forgot to mention, this is a red yellow Saber um, Archer deck primarily, as I do like the Archer stuff. So the next level zero is Heroic Spirit Saber. She's your resonance, um, yellow resonance. So um, you want her in hand, but I run four consistency wise, so you can sometimes play her on field as well. I mean, she's pretty good there, and the deck does search out a lot, so you don't have to worry about not wasting her. But her effect is bar the resonance, but she doesn't actually have it on her card name, other things do. Um, when this card attacks, if you have another master or servant character, this card gains 1,500 power until the end turn. Uh, she's really good early game, so she hits quite a big number for a level 0, uh, 4k is not too bad. Um, yeah, she could be considered one of your main attackers, but you do want her in hand to get your resonance skills off. Uh, basically, we'll go into Rin's Servant Archer, and uh, what he does, he's your Brainstormer. Um, what he does is, when another of your characters becomes um, switched like uh, this, basically, in battle, so basically when it dies, uh, choose one of your weapon characters and that character gains plus 500 power until the end of turn. So basically when something dies, you can give any of your characters, because I think pretty much all of this deck bar, maybe the rim bits, um, are weapons. You can give that power to maybe help keep, keep that alive. Uh, his brainstorm effect is pay one and rest uh, this card, yep, so you pay one of your stock and you rest this. Um, reveal four cards from the top of your deck and put them into your waiting room. For each climax revealed, choose up to one weapon character from your waiting room and return to hand. So basically if you've lost something important or it's gone in the you've been for some reason or other, um, basically he allows you to fish it out so you can play it later on, or for your resonance case, maybe. Uh, now I run four of the red resonator, which is proof of contract we're in. Um, basically what she does is, I believe she's your stop bomb. When this card becomes um, reversed, um, I'm not quite sure the... Um, Tech terminology for most wise stuff, guys. Sorry, 
Um, this card's battle opponent is level zero or lower. You may also rest or kill that guy basically, uh, reverse. I don't really know what you call it. Um, so basically, yeah, she's like a kamikaze. If she would be killed, then a level zero can also be killed that killed her essentially, is what I understand from that. Yeah. Um, her other skill is you may rest this card, choose one of your characters with Archer in its card name until the end of that. Um, till the end of turn that character gains plus 1500 power and the following ability the character facing this card is a lower level than this card this card cannot attack uh, so basically she only really works with all zero archers um, I guess you could play her as a defense card as well I'm not too sure on the effect the um, structure of the rules on that one um, my next uh, card is ancient king archer from the fate zero series um, Basically, he's an assist. Um, you, all your characters in front of this game plus 500. So I thought I needed a little bit of power, but I also like him for his shift ability. So he has shift level zero. At the beginning of your main phase, you may pay the cost. Uh, a, well, you may choose a red card in your hand and this card in your clock and exchange them. So basically, if you're taking him as damage, you need an assist. I'll like, put a random red card I don't want in and add him to hand and then play into an assist. Not too bad. A little bit handy when you need him. Um, yeah, that's it for grade one. There's zeros. Um, so we're going to move on. Grade ones. Uh, I play two Sabres Master Shiro, the double rare. Um, basically, this is the one that you search out with with um, a resolution to fight together Shiro. Uh, and basically, what he does is you pay one when this card attacks. If you have a card named Anger Towards Evil in its card na in your climax area. You may pay the cost if you do until the end of turn. This card gets plus 2000 power and the following ability. When this card battle opponents becomes reversed, we'll call it reverse for now, guys. I think that might be the actual term. Um, you may search your deck for up to one master or servant character, reveal it to your opponent, and put it into your hand and shuffle your deck afterwards. Uh, so basically, what he does is climax combo um, and he pressures your opponent into not wanting you to him guy to die. Um, because if he does, you get a free search for maybe a resonator or something. Uh, my early game is mostly set up about setting up to search for what I need to um, push quite hard late game. Um, next, I run two resolution to fight to get a saber. Uh, basically, what she does is she's on call, put the top card of your deck into clock, she takes it down, she keeps her alive. Um, and then she has resonate, which would be with heroic spirit saber, Shira, uh, heroic spirit saber. Um, and basically what she does is you may reveal her expert, uh, spirit saber from your hand at the beginning of your climax phase you may pay the cost if you do this card gets plus one soul so basically she gets a crit um, so she does an extra damage kind of hurts your opponent a little bit maybe not too bad um, yeah I then run two caster magic bullet rin uh, what she does is she resonates with proof of contract rin which is this one um, and then you may reveal a card named Proof of Contract Rune from your hand at the beginning of your climax phase. You may pay the cost if you do. This card becomes the following ability until the end of turn. When this card's battle opponent becomes reversed, you may pay the, put the character on top of your opponent's deck. So basically, you kill something and you give your opponent it back, but instead of that, that could be something they don't want in their hand or to, to draw. Um, and you're basically stopping them from getting anything new to hand unless they pay the um, drop one into clock to draw two. And in which case they're still drawing this, uh, whatever they kill. Uh, it's not too bad, I find. It's um, can slow your opponent down in some cases, I guess. Um, yeah, I find it quite useful, and it's a resonate ability, which I quite like. I quite like resonate. Next, we've got um, heading for the heading to the risk, the heading for the rescue sa rescue saber. Can't talk today, guys. Uh, basically, what she does is she resonates, reveals a card named her extra saber, which is the level zero. Um, from your hand, and at the beginning of your climax phase, you may pay the cost if you do. This card gains plus 2000 power. Um, I run two of her and two of the other saber, this one, because I find, although the soul is nice, I find sometimes you may need a bit extra power instead of the soul to be able to hit things. Um, I'm not sure if this is correct, maybe I should run four of the um, resolution to fight saber. Um, I'm not too sure, but I find that having a bit of both isn't too bad. Because that way you can hit the damage and hit over numbers if you need to. I then run two confronting a servant Shiro. I run a lot of twos in my grade one lineup because I couldn't really decide what I wanted to do with it at the moment. But um, the new set, which is confirmed for April, will help me decide what grade ones to run. Um, and that makes it a little bit more concise and more what I want from the deck because of the new stuff coming out. 
But basically what confronting a sa uh, servant Shiro does is he resonates with heroic spirit saber again. Um, at the beginning of your climax phase you may pay the cost. If you do, choose one of your characters and that character gains plus 1500 power until the end of turn. So basically he gives you power to your other guys so they can hit numbers. So I may, may be taking um, heading to the rescue saber out for the other saber might not be a bad idea because of this guy. Um, I, his other skill, which is the one I quite like, um, he has an act, pay two, rest this card, so your deck for up to one weapon character, reveal it to your opponent, and put it into your hand, shuffle your deck afterwards. This thing's awesome. <laughs> Basically, he allows me to search for any card in my deck that I want, and add it to hand so I can use it later or now, depending on the situation. Um, allows me to sort of get through my deck, get what I need, and play it, basically. And as I said, my early game is all about setting up for my big plays. So we'll go into the level twos. I run three a master's mental state we're in. Um, basically what she does, she assists all your characters under this guy again, X power, X is equal to 500 multiplied by the character level. So the bigger the guy, the more power it gets. Um, not a bad um, assist. I think most sort of uh, decks do have them. Um, her other skill though is a very good one, um, she resonates with Proof of Contract Rin, um, and then you may pay one to reveal the Proof of Contract Rin um, in your hand. At the beginning of your climax phase you may pay the cost, if you do, choose one of your opponent's level 0 characters or lower and put it into your opponent's waiting room. Basically what this does is it means if my opponent has say a tricky level 0 I don't like or something that's causing me a problem I can go her, resonate, pay one and kill it. Um, really good uh, sort of sniper and can help me get around a few issues if necessary. That and the power is also necessary because I don't really run too much um, in terms of assists. So next we've got resolution not to fight Shiro um, and what he does, I quite like this, um, I don't see many people running them actually. Um, continuous, if you have another card with Saber and its card name, this card gets 500 power and encore per character from your hand into the waiting room. Um, basically, to keep him alive, you just discard a card from hand, and he gains. He becomes seven five for a two one. Um, his auto skill is resonate with heroic spirit saber again. Quite a lot of that in this deck, um, and you may pay the cost if you do. Uh, at the beginning of your climax phase, you may pay the cost if you do until the end of turn. This card gains plus two thousand five hundred power and the following ability: when this opponent's battle opponent becomes uh, reversed, put that character into your opponent's stock. So you just stop bomb with. 10,000 power. Um, yeah, this <laughs> is pretty good for killing stuff, and it means they can't fish it out of the bin unless they sacrifice stuff, and it also means they can't keep it alive with the pay free stock. So it gets over a few problems and it stops your opponent from keeping a field necessarily. Um, yeah, I find it pretty useful. Next, and finally for my great twos, is Battle with Soricho Saber. Um, what she does is she pay, you pay one stock and this card attacks. If a card named armor releases in your climax area, you may pay the cost. If you do, look at the top four cards of your deck. Choose up to one master or servant character from among them, reveal it to your opponent and put it into your hand. Put the rest into your waiting room and this card gains £5,000 until the end of the time. She's my, um, along with Shiro, she's my heavy hitter grade 2. They're quite powerful, my grade 2s. So basically she becomes 13k and again I get a search maybe for a level 3 that I might need for a late game push or maybe even another one of her or Shiro for a grade 2 overhaul. She's also quite good at killing things, I mean 13,000 power before assists, I mean if you include the Rin assist that's an extra 1,000 so that's 1,400 that's going to take out most level 3s. Um, she's quite powerful and as I don't really run, I only run her and Shira, um, Shira level 1 climax combos, I can run a lot of the climax combo with her. Moving on to level 3's, um, I only run 2 a Knight's Hero, a Knight's Oath Saber. Um, she's nice but I don't find her the main hitter in this deck. Um, that and she was quite expensive to get and I spent quite a lot on this deck as it was. But I find 2 is a good number for her. Um, basically what she does is, this card gets plus 500 power for each of your other master or servant characters. So she becomes, she can get 2000 power just off that to become an 11.5. Um, mm. Not too powerful for level 3 but it still helps. Um, but her other ability is a main use. Um, this ability activates up to one part time per turn. During that turn this card is placed on stage from your hand. When damaged out by this card is cancelled so if they climax heal. Um, 
put the top card of your deck into your waiting room and deal X damage to your opponent X equal to the level of that card plus one. Um, so basically what she does is she deals damage for nothing. Um, you either take her or you take damage from the top which could be up to four damage. Um, however I believe the damage can be cancelled so your opponent could get doubly lucky. I um, did see this in Team League actually, um, well, why this event was Nationals or something death like that, I can't remember, sorry guys, I'm not uh, too great with the wise stuff. Um, and my mate Kyle, uh, who's quite a big wise player, was running Kanko, I think, I can't remember, the one that has this effect basically, and I think he had like three of it, and the opponent basically healed all six of the damage he had to take and uh, won the following turn, so it does happen, but in most cases these are quite useful to push your opponent. Uh, and finally for the main, well, the character cards, I run four Heroic Spirit Archer. Really like this guy. Um, I think he's quite powerful. I don't see him being used very much by people. I don't know why that is. Um, personal preference, I really like him. Uh, basically what he does is continuous. If all of your characters, one master or servant, uh, master or seven, sorry, this card gains plus 1000, so it's 11,000 straight off. So it's pretty weak still for a level three, but it's not bad. Um, and then auto, when this card attacks, you move the top card of your deck. If that card is a master or seven character, deal X damage to your opponent, X equal to that character's level. Uh, this damage may be cancelled. So basically, what he does is you attack, and your opponent has to basically heal twice because you get the reveal off the top. Uh, you can take damage from that, and then you can also take damage from the uh, attack of this character which is quite a good, uh, similar to the Oath, maybe not as good damage wise, but then his other effect is Resonate. Reveal a proof of contract will ring from your hand at the beginning of your climax phase, you may pay the cost if you do, this unit is plus 2000 power. Uh, so basically he hits for 13,000 and uh, does double damage almost essentially, um, which I find quite nice. Again I, I've heard that 13,000 isn't massive in this game, but still quite a nice power to be able to hit. Um, especially with the assist and a 1,500, 14, 1450 is pretty decent. Um, the deck does a roll around this and the Sabre is kind of like a backup um, and it's very nice. I find that with the search engine that I run I can quite easily get through this out and that's quite powerful in my opinion and can really hurt people. So next the climaxes are um, for Anger Towards Evil. Uh, this guy basically is the climax to your level 1 Shiro play, um, but you also get, if you trigger him, all your um, basically when the next damage dealt by the attacking character is triggered, his card is cancelled. So basically when this unit attacks, um, say I attacked with my archer and they cancel the damage, but I triggered this, they take a the damage, um, but that damage I don't think can be cancelled. No, it can't be. And uh, well, it doesn't say it can't be, but it doesn't say it can be cancelled. Um, all your characters gain plus one soul and one thousand power as well when you play him onto climax, which combos nicely with your Shiro as well. Next climax is four armor release. Um, basically, this is the climax combo to your level two play. Um, she does the exact same as anger towards evil, an extra one thousand power, and it's about it really, <laughs> and one soul, which is quite nice. Um, so yeah, that's basically it. Uh, my deck profile for Y Shorts. Um, they do get a new set out soon, which I've read up on a lot of the effects, and I will probably change this build a fair amount. Uh, it's not shockingly um, big, but it's a fair sort of upgrade for the deck, ready for the Nationals, as I will probably be playing this deck. Um, so basically talking about where we've been basically for the last uh, five months, um, I got into uni so I've sort of left the team essentially, not quite, I'm still part of it, um, but I'm not around anymore to sort of do videos, do openings and stuff like that because there is no car place in Southampton. I think we have a Forbidden Planet which don't really do anything for Vanguard and very little for Wise. They don't hold tournaments for us either. So, uh, I basically haven't been able to really play against anyone for a long time um, and I haven't really been able to do very much. I mean I've built this and I currently have my Kigero still the X which they get Kigero support which I'm really happy about. Um, new Batama which I built up, forgot to do a deck profile sorry guys but um, I'm going to do one when the new set comes out because they get a lot of support uh, and the deck does become very very strong. 
Um, I've also I also got given golds before I left by uh, golds gears before I left by uh, Josh, and uh, I would do a deck profile, but uh, next stage is a thing, uh, so I need to get those first before I do that uh, if I get them at all. Um, Josh sort of had a bit of um, issues at home, which left him to quit the team. He's since come back and will probably start doing videos as well. Uh, Jordan has been unable to do much until now as well due to work and stuff and as I think is similar so the team's been on a bit of a low at the moment I mean Chris I think has been doing a little bit but I don't think he's been doing videos because I don't know if he knows the YouTube channel or anything we might have to sort that out um, but now Jordan's back doing videos I'm going to try and do a bit more um, and I think Josh is going to start doing some videos so expect to see a few deck profiles in the next couple of months, um, especially with the new Tachi Booster, with new uh, Tachi Kaze and Spikes coming out. Um, that's mostly it. Uh, Team League, we will be there in Cardiff again. For any of you who went last year, we came fourth. Uh, I don't expect us to do as well as last year. It was quite a good year. Um, and we don't have bads with us this year. Uh, we now have, I think we're taking three at the moment. We might be taking two teams, I'm not too sure. But um, it's going to be me and Josh again, and Chris will be joining us. Um, uh, last year, like I said, it was we got very lucky. We did very well, played very well, but I can't see us repeating the feat. Um, I mean, like I say, I've been at the game too long. Uh, I don't really know the meta too well. Same with uh, Josh. I think he's a little bit out of it. Uh, Chris might know it a bit, but we'll have to see. And um, I don't know if... I don't even know what deck I'm taking yet, it might be Noobers, it might be Kigero, it might be something else. Um, but yeah guys, that's about it, um, thank you for watching.